2021. This is the Arlington County, Virginia Board of Equalization hearing. There's four cases on the agenda. The first case is RPC 20012002, properties located at 461 North Thomas Street. Mr. Blake Warren and Mr. Jeremy Chitlick is are representing the owners. And Mr. Warren, you can start with your eight minutes and tell us about the property. Make sure my camera's on. Uh, thank you, board. If you, I, I'm going to direct everyone again to um, our summary of facts page, which can be located on page 40 of 103. Uh, this is the Thomas Place Apartments. It's a uh, property that we've been before the board to discuss uh, the last several years running now. It's located at 461 North Thomas Street. It is currently assessed at 16964200 which is $514,000 a unit. Uh, the value we're requesting for the board today is $14,083,700, which is $426,779 a unit. The uh, property was originally built in 2009. It, uh, it is a low rise garden style apartment complex uh, in the Boston, Virginia square submarket. It has to 33 total units consisting of uh, two and three bedroom units. And the property is positioned within a mile of both the Boston Metro and Virginia square Metro stations. Um, this is a property again that I'm sure the board is, is well aware of at, at this point. Um, we've come before the board in prior years uh, to to discuss the classification of the property. The county currently classifies the property as a mid rise and per their midline uh, and, and assesses it per their mid rise apartment guidelines. Um, uh, last year, we, we brought this case to the board as well as the uh, case that's following at Henderson Park um, uh, under the same pretext and the, the board um, in, in that instance decided uh, to affirm the county's original assessment and um, uh, not disagree with the county's classification of the property as a mid rise property. However, in prior years, uh, uh, hearings that we've brought before the board the board has decided that this is in fact a, a low rise or garden apartment and uh, would be subject to the county's assessment guidelines for cap rate vacancy and expenses and um, uh, has reassessed or revised the, the value accordingly. Um, if you look at page three of the apartment income and expense summary, you'll see that uh, column D and, and column F, the appellant's pro forma are very much in line with regard to uh, uh, revenue and, and and then the bottom line when you get to down to NOI. Um, you know now the one difference here is the the vacancy. Uh, county is again per their mid rise guidelines using a six percent market vacancy rate. Uh, the actual vacancy experienced in 2020 during COVID was uh, uh, about two percent higher at eight uh, percent. We're using those actuals. Uh, to take consideration of, of COVID and the pan pandemic and the lockdown and the, and the issues experienced there. Uh, what it really comes down to then again is is the, the cap rate cap classification. Um, if this property were to be assessed on a uh, what we feel is correct as a garden style apartment building, it would be um, uh, based on the county's guidelines assessed at a cap rate, a base cap rate of 5.9%. Um, or, or excuse me, six percent. Uh, currently, the the county is is uh, assessing this property on a overall cap rate of five and a half percent. Now, as we've also previously discussed, the county has made adjustments to all property types for consideration of uh, the impact of COVID last year with regard to uh, retail. They've they've increased uh, cap rates by thirty basis points for um, hotels. As we discussed yesterday, they've increased cap rates anywhere between 50 to, to 75 to basis points, and I think in some cases 100 basis points, uh, but they made no consideration for apartments. Uh, apartments, in fact, I think decreased uh, uh, this year uh, compared to the 2020 assessments. Um, so we've included, again, the RERC investor survey studies from both 2019 and 2020, which shows a, a median change uh, and that can be found on page 42 of 103 of our packet. 
uh, a mean change of 26 basis points um, from 2019 to 20, a median change of 30 basis points. So we, we took the difference um, in the average of those two, and we're adding an additional 28 basis points to our cap rate, which is how we're getting to our, our final cap rate of 6.28%. Uh, the final thing we'd uh, like to uh, point out to the board and we brought this out in prior years as well is the assessment of this property in comparison to um, uh, some of the the top apartment buildings in the entire county of arlington um, if you turn on page 44 of 103 we've included an, an assessment comps analysis and uh, a review of the top multifamily apartments in arlington county um, as rated by CoStar is five star and built uh, after 2015 in comparison to the, the subject property. Again, the subject property is currently assessed at 514,000 a unit, uh, which would make it the third highest assessment on a per unit basis uh, that you can see on the following chart here, with the exception of the Hyde at 725,000 a unit, uh, the tenant Clarendon at 535,000, and the tenant Clarendon at 535,000 a unit. So, um, Again, for a, a building that we uh, would classify as a garden style apartment in comparison to these um, uh, high rise uh, uh, five star apartment buildings in Arlington County, uh, we don't feel it's appropriate and uh, we ask the board for consideration. Uh, Jeremy, I don't know if there's anything you would like to add. Just expanding on those comparables, um, we had the property, we had the Maxwell, uh, we haven't had the Maxwell yet, but we had um, View, which is right next to it uh, the other day. and. Uh, we talked about how, why is this one, um, Greg asked the question, why is this assessed so much higher than the property next door? Um, this property is assessed over 100,000 more than that as well, and this is not comparable in any way. The only other thing, I think it's a, a mistake, but on the assessor's worksheet under remarks, it says one building two and a half stories above grade, um, which would obviously make it a, a garden style. But um, the question really becomes, is a four-story building in Arlington the same as a nine-story building? And from talking to the owners, talking to other owners, they're completely different worlds when it comes to leasing and tenants and operations. Uh, it's much, much different to operate a four story building than it is a seven story building or eight story building, just as it is to operate a, a 30 story building compared to a, an eight story building. So um, we think the numbers here support, report a reduction. They, the owner, one of the reasons maybe it's so high is if you look at the assessor's worksheet on page four, there's a drop down of quality and they call this a luxury building. If you've ever been in this building, if you ever walked by the building, if you've ever been on the building's website, you know this is not a luxury product. And it seems like the assessor has the understanding that this is a luxury product, um, which is why it's one of the highest assessed properties. And we ask, like always, we could look at page three, but also if we test it and we ask to pass the common sense test, does it make sense to, for this to be one of the highest assessed properties in Arlington? And if you look at the rents and look at everything involved, I don't, I don't believe it is, which is why we're here. So thank you. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Chikas for the county, please. Yes, uh, good morning, board members. Good morning, Mr. Chidler. Good morning, Mr. Warren. Um, we can sort of start working backwards if you want. I apologize, Aaron. Did you want to start? I just want to know if you want me to share the screen or you want me to wait. So yeah, you. please. Uh, we're going to do something a little unique uh, in that um, it doesn't necessarily matter, but for technical purposes, I actually use my iPad, uh, my personal device as my uh, team's screen. So I'm going to have Irving uh, display on his uh, screen. Can you see uh, screen? What we pulled. I can, yeah. I don't know if the other board members can, but we'll just list what the owners themselves uh, use as a brochure for the property. Uh, and if you can see the screen, you'll see it listed as 33 luxury mid-rise apartments. Um, now, again, this is from Dittmar's website. Um, starting with the, uh, the quote-unquote comps analysis, uh, one of the things that obviously stuck out was, as Jeremy, uh, Mr. Chitlick pointed out, was he's comparing a mid-rise, uh, four-star mid-rise to five-star high-rise. Uh, these are uh, almost all multi-hundred unit uh, uh, buildings. 342 units, 257 units, 699 units, 265 units, 491 units. So obviously, if you're going to compare them to a mid-rise with 33 units, you're going to get vastly different per unit values. Uh, it would make more sense to compare them to other mid-rise uh, four stars that would be comparable as opposed to five-star high-rises. Uh, as the board is familiar, uh, we're going to rely mostly heavily on the 
uh, income and expense summary sheet. Uh, this sort of tells the story of the property. Uh, it tells us that the apartment revenue has been up two years in a row, uh, even in a pandemic year, increased by a half a percent. Uh, GPI increased by a quarter of a percent. Um, previously to 2020, it was obviously a very stabilized building. A, a true vacancy dropped in 18 and again in 19. Uh, down by uh, over 50% um, or 60% uh, from 2017's level. It did increase uh, again to uh, just shy of where they were in 2017. Again, this makes sense in a COVID year. Again, it makes sense with a smaller uh, building with 33 units. Uh, even one change can be volatile as we saw. Uh, even that though, when you're looking at the averages uh, that uh, did call a uh, cause a negative uh, decrease in the uh, effective gross for 2020. But when we're looking again at a stabilized property, the averages, we're still well within reason with our original assessment. This is one of those classic uh, assessments where we undervalued some metrics and overvalued others, but equaled out uh, in the end. Uh, we're looking at uh, a case where we uh, underestimated gross potential by about $1,800. We overestimated defective gross by about 24,000 but we also overestimated operating expenses by 25,000. That still led to an underestimate of net operating income by over $1,400. Uh, we're lower than the uh, net operating income from last year. We're lower than this year's. We're lower than the average from 17 to 19. We're lower than the average from 18 to 20. Uh, this is again, a, a well-stabilized property. It's well-positioned. Uh, although technically it's six tenths of a mile from uh, Boston Metro, so it does not receive any Metro uh, cap rate bump. It does obviously afford its tenants the walkability that the Boston area provides. Uh, again, uh, we would, uh, uh, to, to clear things up as well, uh, Mr. Chetwick uh, uh, wanted to, I guess, highlight the idea that our worksheet list is as luxury. Um, that's really just a codifier. It, it doesn't affect the uh, rental rates that are used. It doesn't affect the cap rate, doesn't affect operating expenses, doesn't affect anything. It's a description. Uh, and again, much like the description the owner makes of its same property. Uh, in regards to whether or not this is a four story, uh, we thought this was uh, over with last year. Uh, the appellant themselves calls it a four story in their write up. Uh, CoStar calls it a four story. Uh, the pictures that you just saw displayed list four stories above grade. It's just kind of it's getting silly to try to uh, continuously bring this back to well, maybe it's a three story this year. Um, doesn't matter if there's an error uh, in the writing of it being two and a half stories of a grade or if it's, you know, the idea is that when we revisit these properties, we will recognize what's physically there on site. There is four stories above grade. Uh, this should really uh, not be up for further discussion. Uh, and I'm hoping that the board agrees with that. Uh, the owner agrees that's a four story. They call it a mid rise luxury. Uh, we call it a four story mid rise. Back to the performance of the property. Again, the stabilized history, uh, apartment revenue up, gross potential revenue up, effective gross down. But again, that makes sense uh, in a one year blip where vacancy increased by uh, almost 5%. Uh, but we do believe, again, looking at it as a stabilized property, uh, the county is actually uh, potentially undervalued uh, as it, again, uh, we have an uh, undervalue of the net operating income in both 19 and in 2020 in the pandemic year. Uh, given the, the idea of the stabilized property, given the, the undervalue that the county made, we do believe that the county's original assessment should be confirmed at a 16964200 uh, We're available for discussion. Uh, excuse me for questions. Irving, do you have anything, Dan? I just want to uh, make note that that luxury indicator is a carryover from an old system, which was Ducom. Um, we've since come into the day and age where we use a different system, but some labels still apply. Um, that luxury indicator actually been on this worksheet for quite some time, not just this year. We didn't change it from 2020 to 2021. It was on 2020's worksheet, and I'm pretty sure it was on 2019's worksheet as well. Um, so I hope that answers any questions about whether or not we change the quali quality of this property um, because that has been on this property for a long time. Also, just to, to clarify, I, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm assuming Mr. Warren misspoke, but uh, there were, were no cap changes uh, made from the apartments from 2020 to 2021. None. That is all. Thank you, sir. OK, thank you both. Um, questions from board members. Mr. Metzkin. 
That I, I'm sorry, I just missed this. This is I was paying attention, but just in here, it's for Mr. Chicas. You said there was no cap rate change from 2020 to 2021 in any apartments. Is that what you for said? Apartments. That's correct. Yeah, I just I won't put words in his mouth, but I believe Mr. Warren uh, inferred that there were some changes made in 2021 from 2020. We just want to clarify for the apartments. No, I, I thought they'd said that there were no changes, but in the age of COVID, uh, the implication was that there should be. But so, so you did. There were no changes made in 2021 for the apartments. Any, any kind of apartment? How about vacancy and collections? Any changes to those? Yes, things? there were the changes there, just not for the cap rates. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what your accommodation is for for the instability caused by COVID. Oh, the the changes where the vacancy dropped. The question was directed to the county, so we asked that we allow us to answer that question, please. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So. I'm sorry, Mr. Chica, say again about V and C, what happened with departments? So the, the, the point of that statement was just to clarify that uh, at least the way I heard it was that Mr. Warren had, had uh, potentially insinuated that there were changes made in the cap rates from 2020 to 2021 for apartments. That's what I heard. If I misunderstood, then oh, just, well, just clarify. You know, well, what we really need to know is if, if, if the real facts and the answer is there's no cap rate changes for apartments and vacancy and collections they went up or down or stayed the same? Uh, I believe, uh, and Irving can uh, correct me, but uh, vacancies increased for uh, gardens and mid-rise and decreased by 1% for high-rise. And decreased for high-rise? High-rise only. So you're really not, certainly for high-rises, you're not accommodating in any way the disruptions caused by COVID. And I assume that's based on some information that you've gleaned at the end of 2020. Exactly. And I, can, I can answer that question, Ken. I think you had hopped off um, at the last meeting, but when we I provided some information about our INE analysis. And so for high rise, our median um, vacancy, which includes rent loss and concession, was around three and a half percent for high rise. Um, therefore, we only decreased it down to five percent um, because in 2020 it was at six percent. So that was our median number from all the uh, INEs we received for last from last year for the 2019 information. It showed a median of three, about three and a half percent, and the average was even around four percent. So again, we only decreased it down to five percent based off of that information. So again, we're in slow motion, so probably that's going to be affected by this year's results when you generate 2022 okay it's, exactly it's, it's what happens the assessment process system. thanks very much okay other questions mr hoffman yeah um in in column f uh on page three there's a fifty thousand dollar it's it doesn't have a line number so i'm just going to say it's fifty thousand dollars with an asterisk by it um is that a is that a deduction from the NOI? It, it, the note says deduction. I just want to make sure I'm I'm calculating it right in column F. It it should be a, a negative number, right? You're asking Correct. the county. Okay. So if the, so, without the fifty thousand, the NOI is nine. You know, it, it, it's it's up over nine. It's closer to column E. It is column E. Okay. Got I wasn't it. sure you're addressing because it was the appellant co column. So sorry for jumping, but yeah. It, OK, I think we've got the answer to it, though. Got it. Yeah, Perfect. thanks. OK, any other questions? No, Mr. Chikas, if you take a minute to wrap up. Yes, ma'am. So again, uh, valuing this property correctly as a mid-rise uh, apartment, uh, stabilized nature, uh, <coughs> we uh, undershot the gross potential, we overshot expenses, we undershot net operating income. Uh, we're again lower than net operating income from 2019. We're lower than it in 2020 in a pandemic year. Uh, we're lower than it if you look at stabilized from 17 to 19. We're lower than it if you stabilize it from 18 to 20. Uh, we're just low. Um, this property should be confirmed at 16,964,200. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Warren it, or Mr. Chitlick, whoever's going to do the wrap up. I'll start. The difference between a three story building and a four story building by cap rates 50 basis points. The difference between a four story building and a 30 story building is zero basis points. So the county base says if it's over three, it's the same cap rate as if it's 30, 30 stories, which is absolutely incorrect when you look at the market. 
Blake, anything else you want to, to wrap up on? You're muted. Yeah, just real quick, uh, and this came up in, in last year's case as well uh, with the county showing the marketing flyers. And I think uh, Greg, who's not on today, I think Sophie is with uh, Ditmar, that you know their marketing departments and and their kind of internal staff is different. Um, so you know internally they they view this as a a, a garden style property, not a mid rise. Um, now I know it says luxury mid rise on there, but they're not going to say their their marketing department is not going to say this. You know, we have uh, 33 crappy garden rise or mid rise apartments available. Um, it's just a, a different department. I think that was made clear in, in last year's case. Uh, so just want to put that out there. And then just finally, with regard to, I know Chris had said that the um, revenue had increased from, from the prior year, but again, uh, NOI is down. It's down three and a half percent from the prior year. And, and the actual assessment, I think, only decreased about half of that, about two percent. Thank Greg you. is on, Greg is on the call for next case. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, it's just to the board members now. What's everybody think? Mr. Maskin. Okay. Goes to who's least shy. Um, we we've in mass appraisal there are common definitions for certain things. And mid rise is one of them four to eight stories inclusive. And is there a difference between an eight and a four story? Could be, but it's not possible to individualize every single property in every single jurisdiction throughout uh, the land. And um, so, and, and it's well accepted what's a garden, what's a mid rise, what's a high rise. Um, getting into luxury, that, that's way subjective. And I, I agree with the appellants. It's, it's a marketing ploy. I'm in the marketing business and I know that happens, but that's that didn't affect this decision, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, four stories is four stories. Um, so I, I'm good with what uh, we've been presented here. Okay, other? Mr. Panaranda. Uh, yeah, I agree with Ken. I mean, uh, it's the same. It's pretty much the same case that we saw last year, whether they, it was it's supposed to be mid rise or a garden. But uh, you know, we did we did determine that it was, in our opinion, a mid rise. And like uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chica said, you know, they are advertising their marketing as a mid rise, and whether it's a different department or not. I mean, that's what they classify it as. Um, they want to do this uh, for tax assessment purposes as a different type of property. Um, I still, regardless of that, I think, well, that, that would only change the cap rate, but based on the numbers and the, NOI, the NOIs, uh, you know, I agree with uh, Mr. Chicas, the averages from last three or four years are much higher than what we have now. So I, I'm okay with the assessment the way it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I don't have anything additional to add. Actually, without having the operating income for 2020, the original assessment was pretty right on with how it performed and the historical information. So anything else from anybody? Mr. Hoffman. Yeah, yeah um, I mean, the only thing that jumped out is we've reviewed this a couple years in a row and the vacancy was higher um, this year, but I think it's been addressed um, in the test column and in the, uh, or in, rather in the, column DNF and you know you take the appellant's numbers and you use the county's cap rate and you end up with a, a higher right. um, assessment so I think it's I think it's fair my, you know my only comment on the garden style cap rate is I think we ought to take a look at that for garden apartments because that's where the data is kind of wacky on sales um, you know they've derived a cap rate based on three 2020 sales one is a 39% assessment to sales ratio, one's a 74 and one's 124. So you're kind of all over the map. And, and I think the key thing is that what they're tr trying to capture is that most of those garden apartments, it's not a matter of whether it's a, uh, not necessarily a three to a four story, but it's that these three story garden units in Arlington are very old, um, like 1930s, 1950s, 1960s type buildings. 
So that's where, I mean, I think that's what's driving the cap rate up on those, but then you get these every now and then you get a data point that's based on redevelopment and it throws off the whole thing. So, um, you know, the four story buildings are going to continue to argue that they're garden um, until we address it. Uh, and I think we should at some point, um, but it's more an issue with the garden apartments. It's not really, as, it, I don't see it as an issue with the four story. Buildings. Good point. Okay, Mr. Matzkin. Very good point. Um, with, of course, the, as we've heard many times, the, the department also refers to RERC and other broader scale uh, assessments. Uh, just for this case, the gardens don't tell the, the three sales don't really tell us anything. So they modify it by additional, less specific, but also less screwy uh, information. Uh, so, I mean, they, they got to do what they got to do uh, in, in that regard. Um, that's all I want to add on to that. Okay. Any opinion contrary to that? No? Mm -hmm. All right. Then I will move to confirm the county. Do I have a second? Okay. A second by Mr. Matzkin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It's six to zero. It's unanimous. The county's confirmed at 16,964,200. Okay, the second case on the agenda is um, RPC 2001302743031 4301 Henderson Road. Mr. Warren, you can start with your eight minutes and tell us about this property. Okay, so I'll refer the board to page 37 of 103. Again, this is a, a very um, basically similar case to the case we just discussed. It's a property that's adjacent to uh, the property we just discussed. Um, and it's located at 4301 North Henderson Road. It's currently assessed at 31,693,800, which is 480,000 a unit. Uh, what we're requesting from the board today is a value of 26,812,400, which is 406,248 a unit. Property was uh, originally built in 2014. It's uh, uh, what we classify as a garden style apartment in the Boston Virginia Square submarket, a total of 66 units of one bedroom, two bedroom and three bedrooms. It is uh, positioned within a mile, again, of both the Boston and Virginia Square metro stations. Um, and if you turn now again to the summary page on page three, you'll find our analysis um, the historical operations of the property, along with column D, which is the current assessment, and column F, which is our um, pro forma. The uh, main differences here are with regard to vacancy. As you can see, vacancy, the actual vacancy incurred in 2020 was uh, about 2% higher than the counties at uh, almost 8%, and then a slight uh, uh, increase in comparison to the county's operating expenses at uh, a little over 27%. The, the county is using 27% in their in their current assessment of the property. Uh, actual NOI is approximately $4,000 below the, the assessor's current estimate of, of net operating income. Uh, but again, the, the main difference here comes down to the classification of the property. Uh, we would classify this property as a garden style that's currently being classified as a mid-rise and is subjected to the county's mid-rise assessment guidelines. Uh, the 6.18% cap rate that is uh, utilized in our pro forma in comparison to the county's 5.4% is derived by, uh, again, uh, the garden style classification, which would indicate a 5.9% overall cap rate, and then, a, a again, an adjustment for COVID of 28 basis points, which is supported by our RERC uh, investor surveys from uh, both 2019 and 2020 showing um, the increase in those cap rates and, and the impact of COVID. Um, again, on page, uh, we, we've included an assessment uh, comparison chart on page 40 of 103, excuse me, 41 of 103. Um, and you'll find that the uh, subject property in comparison to all the other five-star uh, classified co-star properties that were built after 2015 in comparison to the subject property, uh, it would be it would make it the seventh highest assessment on a per unit basis. 
uh, which is currently being assessed at 480,000 units. So we would ask the board to to consider that fact as well. Um, that's about all I have, Jeremy. I don't know if you want to add anything else. So, yes, sorry. Um, I mean, it was on. So last year we came in front of the board and said, look, our assessment's up $2.1 million and we're in the middle of a pandemic. And the board rightfully said, we'll look at this next year because the valuation date's 1-1-2020 one, one, and we'll see what happens next year. So next year, the income goes down $40,000, mostly because the concessions doubled and the vacancy doubled. Actually, the vacancy went up fivefold and the NOI is down $40,000. The assessment dropped $2,500. So we're still over $2 million more than we were in 19. The assessment post-pandemic or mid-pandemic, the assessment basically stayed flat and the NOI dropped $40,000. And Greg, um, Greg Rains is on the phone. Greg, I don't know if you want to speak anything to the fact you called it a, um, a luxury mid-rise on the website. You might want to update that before next year's hearing because uh, it sounded like that carried some weight. Are you on? Yeah, I'm on. I, yeah, I, I think that thought some I think someone made a good point that from a marketing standpoint Sophie and her team you know we're not going to put garden style on there because of the uh, the connotation that it carries in a way of rent um, you know we're going to try to pump up our properties and, and make them uh, as desirable as possible but you know for all intents and purposes this is a garden style building based on the rents that it achieves um, the value it has in the market I think you made a very good point about the two million dollar increase um we did say we would revisit that uh, our noi drop this year it'll be a lot uh, bigger drop come, moving forward uh because of the difficulty in, in refilling um two and three bedroom units so i think that um you know this property should revert back to kind of where we where we landed a couple years ago based on the appraisals that we we've, we've received for various reasons but um yeah i think greg had a good point earlier about the cap rates need to be re revisited in general for a garden style, but this is a, a garden style building. So again, the cap rate of a four story building and a cap rate of a high rise are the same with the county. The only difference they give is the garden style. Um, the the only other the only other point is that we've we're seeing this a lot that January, February, March were great years in 2020. The problems then started in um, started after that in April. But the difference is you had annual rents. So you didn't see it like you did in retail where people just stopped and boarded up. They didn't really leave to go. People weren't out in June touring apartments because they were stuck in their apartments. So they were extending. This year in 2021, where you look where we are today, and, and I understand the risk of saying, well, we'll get that next year, even though we, we heard that before. Um, 2021 is a absolute dismal year when we're gonna when we look where we sit today because People are finally out of their apartments and able to look and move. And they're realizing maybe I don't want to be in a, uh, a single unit box in the middle of the city. Maybe I want to have more space if I'm working from home and, and doing that. So the trend, the absolute trend here was uh, a million seven fifty to a million seven. And next year it's going to be lower than a million seven. And, and luckily we have the owner here to testify that that's the case. But we'd like we'd like you to look at the trend from 19 to 20 to see where it is. And the county basically is taking us flat from 20 to 21, which is again over 2 million higher than we were in 19. The property's worth less than it was last year. Um, and uh, Greg, anything else? Um, no, I think you. I think you're you're you were right in saying that during the summer last year there wasn't a lot of movement because people were staying and they were there was no knowledge of kind of the future once at the end of the year once that knowledge was out there that there would be a time in which arlington might not be the most desirable location there was pretty much a mass exodus so again we we, we, we probably will address that next year with all of our properties I, i'm sure all the properties in arlington will have that same story but um again this one goes back to me anyway that we did have an, a pretty substantial increase last year in our assessed value with only a classification as the cause, which took us way over the real value of the property. And now we're, we're, we're having a reduction in our NOI, so that should be reflected on our value. Thank you. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Chicas for the county, please. Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, so again, very much like last case, uh, we have a four story property as acknowledged by the appellant in the write up. Uh, four stories is acknowledged by CoStar. Four stories is acknowledged by reality, there being four stories above grade. Four stories is acknowledged by the owner themselves. Uh, again, I don't know if um, uh, Irving can display his screen or if he needs to, but in the packet, you'll see another brochure from Dittmar marketing as a luxury mid rise, uh, showing pictures of a four story above grade building. Um, again, very much like last case, a stabilized, uh, well run property. Uh, revenue increases two years in a row, and again, revenue increase of 1.7% in a pandemic year. Uh, increases across the board, parking went up, other went up, rubs went up, uh, gross potential went up in a pandemic year. Um, why did effective gross fall? Because the, as Mr. Chitlick pointed out, uh, vacancy increased uh, by over 3% and concessions increased by over 2%. Uh, this is again what we saw in many properties in a pandemic year. Uh, they uh, incentivized their uh, tenants to stay in place with free amenities, parking, etc. And even doing that, they saw increases in parking revenue, other revenue, and rubs revenue. Um, you know, this is again a stabilized property. True vacancy uh, average of 0.7%, less than 1% average. So this is uh, 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 sort of a blip. The idea that they had this uh, 3% over uh, 3% increase. Uh, CoStar right now shows them at, at uh, zero percent uh, vacancy. So as far as speculating, um, there's there's speculation abound. Um, again, if we're looking at uh, operating expenses, they drop by seven percent. Um, if we're looking at again averages, we underprojected uh, the gross potential by over fifty-two thousand dollars. We underprojected effective gross by twenty-five hundred dollars. Now, granted, we underprojected operating expenses by almost seven thousand. But that still left a over projection on a net operating income by four thousand dollars. We're talking about three tenths of one percent difference. Um, if we're looking at a stabilized property, which we should be, the three-year net operating average we're still lower than the three-year net operating average from 18, uh, 17 to nineteen, and we're lower than the three-year operating average uh, NOI three-year operating average from eighteen to twenty. So it's the very much the same thing as last case, no matter how you slice it, we're uh, undervalued, if anything, especially considering, again, this is a four story uh, mid rise. Much like last case, uh, again, this property benefits in its location, its walkability. Uh, while it doesn't receive the metro proximity bump onto its cap rate, it's 0.7 cents of a mile. So you're talking about an extra two minute walk, uh, but you still have that walkability to the metro, to Boston, to everything that the those that uh, get the metro bump enjoy. So its location uh, is, is uh, well desired, uh, and again, that's echoed in its vacancy uh, and, and occupancy over the last four years. Um, just given these, these, these factors, uh, given the idea that uh, stabilized property, we undershot uh, gross potential, we undershot effective gross, uh, given the fact that this appears to be one year blip uh, of uh, vacancy and concessions, uh, that again tend to be smoothed out over time, uh, maybe even been smoothed out in this this calendar year itself. Uh, we do believe that uh, within three tenths of one percent of the current net operating income, uh, and again having undershot it last year, we do believe that the county should be confirmed at thirty one million six hundred ninety three thousand eight hundred. Irving, anything, Ted? Um, no, I think you addressed all the major points of the case. Um, I know there was comments about the reduction in the NOI from 19 to 20. Um, we like to remind the board, I'm pretty sure you're aware that when we assessed this property, we had the information that's in columns A, B, and C. Um, as you can see, the most recent information as far as that history, that NOI is well above what we projected for the 2021 assessment. Um, during the appeal process, we received the 2020 information and as Chris stated, I mean, we're pretty spot on with the actual NOI achieved at this property. So that to me further supports our assessed value of this property uh, because we got so close within the NOI without actually even knowing what they achieved at the time of the assessment being formulated. Um, I think due to the information presented, this mid rise argument should be put to rest, I mean, especially since the department defines mid-rise as four stories. That's the beginning of it. Um, it's on our guidelines. It's what we apply to every property type, every apartment property type when we classify it. Um, the 
mid-rise categorization of this property did not just come from Ditmar's website. Um, you can also look at uh, CoStar, they call it a mid-rise. It's more so to support our argument that we're not just classifying this property as a mid-rise, even their brochure show it as a mid-rise, and that should mean something. Um, if the owner is marketing this property as a mid-rise, then they should find no fault in us to classify this as a mid-rise property. That's but our to speak to that, yeah, just Go sorry to, to interrupt you, uh, to speak to that, and, and again, I don't want to put words in Mr. Chitlick's mouth, but I believe he inferred that if the owner changes it to a garden for next year, uh, that that should hold more weight with the the uh, board. And I, again, we're hoping that that's not the case, that this isn't an idea where if we change marketing brochures, that that changes what it is in reality. Uh, it's a four-story building. It's four stories above grade. Uh, you know, whether or not we agree on that, that's a marketing ploy or whatnot, it is what it is. It's four stories above grade. Uh, that being said, we do believe that the property should be confirmed at 31693800 uh, Thank you. That is all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Questions from the board members? Mr. Hoffman. Yeah, Greg, are you are you seeing people moving from the two and three bed units to the into one bedrooms? Yeah, absolutely. We're um, at all of our properties, uh, Greg. We've seen um, a movement out of two and three bedrooms to you know because one roommate will move back wherever, and then one will stay in Arlington, and they'll get a one bedroom. To fill those back in has been extremely difficult. Um, anytime I pull our unit availability across our portfolio two by twos and three by twos are really 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 difficult to fill still now i think that that's picking up and you'll see that in the next year we'll be hopefully back to normal right but um the two bedroom and three bedrooms had a massive vacancy rate end of last year moving into the beginning of 21. yeah there's there's one one bedroom in this out of the 66 here yeah i mean that's pretty much the the model for this building in Thomas Court is that they're they're two and three bed with dens. That's kind of the the market you're going after, right? We used to have a thought process of you know, anytime you got to eleven hundred dollars, twelve hundred dollars a roommate, that 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 was always going to you know carry the day when it came to price points. I mean, hopefully you get above that, but I mean we we were. Twenty six hundred dollars for a three bedroom with two months free, and I mean, it was it was really very very difficult. Almost had the price the two bedrooms as a one bedroom uh, to to rent them. And like I said, that bears out through twenty twenty one's numbers. But yes, yeah. I'm just curious because on the rent roll, same with the last one. You know, you're going into the year with seven units unrented vacant. Um, even more that are kind of expiring in January and the pro forma number has like a 7% vacancy rate in it. That was Jan 1 and then today, you know, I go on and it looks like you've got 10 units available on the website. So that's 15% vacancy. I'm just curious why you didn't put a, you know, come in with a higher vacancy rate projected in your pro forma. Um, I'll answer that because that's that's the calendar year information. Um, that's what we use. We should have going back at it because you see that it's the current vacancy rate is 15%, but you also see if you rent one of those units, you get a free month or possibly two free months. So the concession on top of that is an additional 15%. Where the county is saying no, that vacancy and the concession and the collection loss is a total of 5% or 6%. I think obviously knowing what we know now and knowing really what we knew mid-pandemic, that was that was a bit of a fall. The reason it was only seven percent is because, like you see, a lot of those leases are expiring in January. Well, those are your leases. They were signed last January before anybody knew anything. So that's that's really the reason. Looking at it from the year, but the the projection we absolutely should have taken a pro forma vacancy of fifteen twenty percent when you include concessions and in, um and rent loss. Actually, if we had absolutely zero vacancy at the property, the Vacancy, rent loss, and concessions would still be over six percent, just because the concession alone is above six percent. Okay. All right. Other questions from board members? No. Mr. Panaranda. Yes, this is for uh, Mr. Chickas. On the income, I know that uh, you're saying that you underestimated the income. 
Is it mainly because of the rubs? Uh, I know that uh, I noticed that you can maybe you combine, but they had in the past uh, other income and uh, uh, some rubs that they had, but uh, you don't have any rubs in your estimate. So um, I'm not sure. I mean, in this case, it's a little more. It's a the amount is a little more substantial than the previous case, but. Is that, that's correct. Like, yeah, should yeah, be separated yeah. or? Exactly. Yeah. On our worksheet, uh, which I believe you can see on page. So on our worksheet on page, uh, Lord, maybe four of 103, you can see that we actually don't have a line for rubs. It's just listed as other income. So on our revisions, if we offer them, uh, we're able to break that down a little bit more if it's other income. Uh, miscellaneous income, rubs income, etc. Uh, but on the worksheets itself, we just group it into other. Just combine it. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Any final questions? No, Mr. Chikas, if you take a minute to wrap up, please. Yes, ma'am. So again, uh, very much like last uh, property. Uh, well run, well stabilized. Uh, they did have a COVID blip, uh, but to the speculation on it's having harder time to rent two and three bedrooms, as you can see in years 17, 18, 19, vacancy dropped year after year after year. Uh, concessions dried up year after year after year. It makes sense to offer them in a, a, a tumultuous year, if you will, uh, but there's no reason to have expectation that it wouldn't get back to vacancy uh, as seen historically. Uh, when we look at it uh, historically, when we look at the averages, we're below the three-year average 17 to 19 for NOI. We're below the three-year average 18 to 20 for NOI. Uh, we're spot on. We're within two, three-tenths of 1% uh, for the current year's uh, NOI. Uh, again, you've seen this before. We underprojected on some expenses. We underprojected on, uh, excuse me, on, on uh, income, and that led to a, 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 in this case, a reasonable uh, opinion of value for the valuation for the year. Uh, that being said, we do believe that the county should be confirmed at 31,693,800. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Warren or Mr. Chitlick, yeah, take the, this, please. The, the one year blip um, obviously is not correct. We have the owner here telling us it's only getting worse. Um, it's not a one year blip. We're all still here virtually. Um, if everything was great, we'd be back, back meeting in a room. The rubs are up $10,000 because the Utilities are up $10,000 because the rubs are reimbursement that the tenants pay because the tenants didn't leave their apartments. So their their expenses, their utilities were higher. They were there longer. Uh, Chris went through and he said, well, parking's up. Parking's up from 102000 to 103000 So we can go down the lines of things that went up. But the fact is the trend here is worse and the things are getting worse. And what we know outside of page three, there's 103 pages here. Outside of page three, we know that things have continued to get worse. And for this asset type, the owners here telling us that things have continued to get worse. And you see where we sat as of January 1, things had gotten considerably worse. Yet we're still 2 million higher than we were in 2019. And after all this, things are getting worse and seeing how vacancies up and all these things are bad, the assessment dropped by $2,500, which does not capture that in any way. Um, Blake, anything else? You're muted. Blake and I are always muted because we have kids running around in the background, so we apologize. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I apologize. Yeah, just uh, one last point. I know Mr. Cheek is, uh, you know, a lot's been made about the marketing flyer and, and um, the marketing department marketing this is, is, is mid rise. And Mr. Cheek has pointed out that he would hope that if if the owner, uh, you know, redoes their marketing flyer next year and it's, it's classified as a garden, that uh, the board wouldn't instantly decide to uh, indicate it as a garden. And I think that's the whole point we've been trying to make is um, just because it's this marketing flyer is being listed as a, as a mid rise right now, uh, you need to look further into it. And, you know, if, if the owner were to change this next year to uh, the marketing flyers luxury high rise apartments, we would hope that the uh, the county wouldn't instantly say, oh, well, this is how they're marketing. They're marketing is high rise. We'll change our classifications to a high rise. And that's how we'll what we'll value the property in, in 2022. Um, so, again, I think that, that kind of just speaks to our point. OK, thank you, gentlemen. Um, it's just among the board members. What's everybody think, Mr. Hoffman? Yeah, I mean, well, we got 
little less than half the year to see how this trend plays out, but I think there may be a trend um, where we're going to we're going to see next year that there's a little bit more vacancy than what they're carrying in their pro forma. Um, and I also think that expenses, you know, in in 20 are probably going to go up in 21 and probably going to go up again in 22. Um, so, you know, we'll see that data as it comes. Um, I think that's kind of what you want to focus in on. Um, I don't think the appellant needs to really waste a lot of time changing their marketing materials on the website. We're, we're smart enough to understand uh, how that works. Um, but uh, I would I would support a modest reduction um, on the basis that the last the last case we looked at, we, we evaluated it with um, with the appellant's numbers and, and the county's cap rate and it came out higher. So we reverted back to the county. Um, but this one, if I if you do the same thing with column E um, and use the county's cap rate, it's a little bit lower. It's thirty one million six eleven two hundred. OK, other comments? Mr. Panaranda. Uh, yeah, I kind of disagree with uh, making any I mean any reduction further than what we have uh, looking at the same way as you know I did the previous case uh, the average NOIs that we have for the past three and four years are still higher than uh, what we have for this year and uh, as far as the vacancy I don't really think that uh, apartments or buildings like this are suffering like uh, office space or hotels uh, many people had a lot of assistance uh, Looking at the website, I'm not sure where uh, uh, you know Mr. Hoffman saw that there were 10 apartments vacant, but uh, I'm trying to see even to book an apartment. Everything seems to be occupied. Everything says you will be notified, except for one apartment that is coming up available, a two bedroom on September 26. But so that doesn't tell me that you know this building is suffering or it's vacant or going through a, a hardship. So I'm fine with the assessment the way it is. Mr. Yates, you're on mute, please. Greg, did you leave the $50,000 for replacement in there when you came up with your NOI number? Using no, I, that? Put it, I put it back in. OK. Yeah, I think with the yeah. last one. Well, I, I also agree that I think we're there may be a trend but we're not in it. We don't have a trend yet. I don't see. I don't see reducing it. I th I think the county's correct at this stage. Next year, we might have a half a year of a trend here, but not yet. Okay, Mr. Maskin. I'm hitting the wrong mute uh, microphone uh, after 500 tries. Um, I, I agree. I agree with Mark. I mean, th this is th there's no disaster here, and it's you know we see this. And this makes sense. We see it all the time that as as the economy, as the market for an individual real property deteriorates over time, um, uh, real property owners are feeling the effects in real time, of course, but not the assessment effects. On the other hand, we don't get appellants uh, uh, come forth uh, when things get a lot better, saying, "Oh, you're, you know, you're you're assessing us on last year's deteriorated uh, I and E when in fact we're doing very well this year." I'm, I'm say that tongue in cheek. I, I would do the same, of course, and everybody on the call would. Um, Things lack, and 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 to underscore what I think Jose said, that this is pretty stable for 2020. Things were weird, nonetheless. It was pretty stable, mm -hmm. uh, and, and and I I, I support uh, this this uh, very almost indistinguishable change in, in uh, assessment from 19 to 20. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. I agree. I mean, I could go either way. I can see where Greg is coming from, but I look at it and it's such a such a slight reduction. Um, I think next year may be a different story, but 
you know, I would I would stay with the original assessment. Does somebody want to make a motion? I'm going to go ahead and move that we confirm the assessment at thirty one million six ninety three eight hundred. OK, I'll second. OK. And Mr. Gates is a, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. OK, it's five to one without um, Mr. Hoffman. The county's confirmed at thirty one million six ninety three eight hundred. All right, the next case on the agenda is RPC 1702013. Properties located at 1730 16th Street North. Mr. Warren, you can start with your eight minutes and tell us about this property. Uh, uh, Ms. Dooley and her chairperson Dooley, um, I have a question. These next two cases are kind of sister properties. They come on the single same operating statement. I don't know if the board or the county has any objection to do them together or how the best way to handle it, but it's they're essentially identical no. properties. Yeah, we suggest the same if you're okay with that, Madam Chairwoman. Okay, and then I mean, well, we just have to vote separately since they have different RPCs, but sure, we can exactly. Yeah, they're, 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 they're literally the same, same values, same everything. Okay, all right, Mr. Warren. Okay, if you turn on page and these and um. Uh, I believe these came in the, the same packages for each RPC. We had we submitted basically the same exact appeal package. So um, if you turn to page 30, you'll find our summary of facts. Uh, these are the 16 Quinn apartments. They are uh, located on two individual tax parcels. Um, it's currently assessed at 1,539,400, which is 192,000 a unit. And uh, the value we're requesting from from the board today is a value of one million three hundred sixty four thousand seven hundred or one hundred seventy thousand a unit. Uh, the, this property was originally built in, in 1940. Uh, each of these tax parcels has four units on it, uh, so eight total units. They are garden style apartments in the Roslyn submarket. Uh, if you turn to page three, our apartment income and expense summary, uh, you'll see the um, individual uh, D&E columns for the, from the county. Uh, as you can see, all the assumptions for income and uh, expenses cap rate are going to be exact, exactly the same. And actually in between those columns, you'll see the combined. Um, and they're not highlighted in bold. So the GPI of 167,000 and EGI of 157,000 and total expenses of uh, 63,116. The uh, main difference here is going to come down to two things um, it is one with consideration to the operating expenses. Uh, you will see that the county is currently estimating operating expenses of 40% in their 2020 assess 2021 assessment for both these tax parcels. Um, the actuals uh, combined is closer to 42% um, and and uh, about 2% higher than, than the county is using currently estimated in their in their analysis. Um, the uh, cap rate as well. Uh, we've made a, a, an adjustment there similar to as we've done in uh, our prior cases with regard to the impact of COVID. Uh, the county is currently using a overall cap rate of 6.15%. We've added 28 basis points uh, as supported by our RERC investor surveys and the differences, uh, the increase in cap rates from 2019 to 2020, uh, the mean being 26 basis points, uh, the median at 30 basis points, we're right in the middle at, at 28 basis points, and, and that's our support for, for increasing the cap rates uh, for the risk profile associated with, with the pandemic. Um, uh, those are the two main differences. We would hope that the, the county would give consideration to the increased operating experience, expenses experienced at the property in 2021. Uh, Jeremy, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, yesterday, um, the county used PWC to help support why they didn't change and make enough of a change or in our opinion enough of a change uh, for the hotel cap rates. That same PWC report states that the mid-Atlantic apartments cap rates changed 25 basis points from the year prior. Yet the county determined that there was no change at all. Um, the sales do not support the numbers that they have on this. The, again, these are very strange. They're four building, they're, they're four unit buildings. Um, so they don't really have necessarily a, a set class when you compare it to a, a 60 unit garden style walk up apartment that has a lobby and a front desk and a bunch of employees. 
Um, this is essentially a house that has four units in it, uh, two, two identical houses. Um, Greg or Sophie, anything you want to add about uh, 16 Quinn? Um, no, other than like you said, they're, I mean, the properties are really old. So, I mean, the, the expenses, they're moving higher this year. I mean, it's just very costly to maintain these. So I, I don't know if that's part of our conversation so far, but those expense numbers are continued upon. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. The, all the leases expire this year. The, the property is relatively stable. Um, as you saw, there was no vacancy, but if one unit vacates, they flip it and somebody comes in right away on an eight unit building or, or these individual four unit buildings that, that really throws the number off. So um, that's, just wanna check one more thing. Yeah, okay, that's that's pretty much everything I have. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Chicas for the county. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so again, as the board has seen before, and looking at the summary sheet, uh, in, in this case, incorporating both properties 013 and 014, we can see that we underprojected uh, across the board. Uh, we projected low on gross potential, uh, almost $11,000 low on effective gross. Uh, granted, we were $7,800 low on operating expenses, but that still led us to be $3,000 below on net operating income. Just like in the last two cases, we're lower than the three-year average, 17 to 19. We're lower than the three-year average, 18 to 20. Um, we're just low. Um, you know, as Mr. Chitwick pointed out, uh, vacancy can be volatile, but this the property has been extremely stable. A three-year vacancy and collection and, and concession average of 2.3%. Um, so again, I, I don't think it's ever been above 2.15%. It's 0% this year. Um, granted, uh, uh, as Mr. Ains pointed out, the uh, operating expenses increase, uh, but we're right on par with the three-year 17 through 19 average. So uh, as we look to 2022, uh, I'm sure we'll keep 2020 in mind and make adjustments for 2022. But in regards to 2020, 2021, uh, we're, we're right on top of it. Again, as we've seen with many of these cases, any adjustment made to operating expenses, we'd ask you to, to make the same adjustments to the income side. Uh, which would uh, almost assuredly result in an increase, uh, uh, which we don't do without a third party appraisal. Uh, that being said, uh, given the under projections made by the county, given the undervalue made by the county in regards to the net operating income average for 17 through uh, 19, as well as 18 through 20, we do believe that the county should be confirmed uh, at a value of 1 million, uh, excuse me. So each parcel will be valued at 769,700. So again, 769,700. Anything to add, Irving? Um, as I pointed out, I mean, we did, like Greg pointed out, we had some garden sales um, that occurred within 19 and 20. Um, I think one of the most comparable sales would be Courtly Apartments that sold June, July 31st, 2019 for $250,000 per unit. It's an eight unit garden property. Um, we had sales in, and this property is of the same age and close to the same size of these two lots, if you combine the two. Um, the property we're talking about, they're about 1100, no, 11,408 square feet, the two subjects. Uh, the one that sold was 8,517 square feet. There's a RA615 zoning for the subject, RA818 zoning for the one that sold. But again, they're similar in age, similar in size. Um, and again, that is a recent sale that we had. Uh, there were also sales in 2020 that resulted in, what, 208,000 per unit, um, 166 thousand per unit and then one for 464,000 per unit. Um, clearly we're not using that one because of just the sales price and I think the seller itself, but that was a 14 unit property in the Roslyn metro area, just like the subject. Um, so again, yes, we look at PWC, we look at RERC, we look at CoStar for sales information, but we do not disregard the sales that we have in the county. Uh, one reason we don't do that is because there are sales in Arlington County and not just the Mid-Atlantic region. The Mid-Atlantic region considers properties in South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, 
um, Southern Virginia as well as Northern Virginia. And I think it goes up above Maryland. So we don't rely solely on RERC. We look at sales that we have in the county um, and we compare how our cap rates and sales fall within the uh, range of these publications oftentimes. Um, we also try to research are these publications based off of sales or are they based off of surveys? So um, I hope again we can clarify our assessment process. Um, this has been communicated plenty of times. It hasn't changed and we're always here to answer what questions we can. I think one other thing to point out too is uh, again going back to the summary sheet is while we're low as compared to 2019's uh, NOI and 2020's NOI, the appellant's numbers uh, almost $10,000 lower than that and it's the lowest it's been on this uh, four-year summary sheet. Um, this is after a, a, an NOI increase in, in 18, uh, over $100,000 in 19, and a, and a drop of just 2%. Uh, they're calling for a drop of over 10% uh, to an NOI of 87,000. So uh, never been that low in its four year history on this sheet. Uh, on this sheet. Uh, so again, given that we're low compared to the averages uh, 17 through 19, low to compared to the averages of 18 to 20, we're lower than last year and we're lower than this year. We do believe we should be confirmed at 769,700. Thank you. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Okay, questions from any board members? Mr. Hoffman. Just um, for the county, uh, I know we've looked at some other buildings on the residential side that were like four unit rent less than four, and that was the threshold. How come this is not being evaluated as a residential building if it's got four or a few? Is it less than four is the threshold? I believe it's less than four. It's less than okay. four. So you have four, so that's why we're doing this as a, as an apartment public. Got it. Yes, and then even more so, it's you know as as we stated, the owner uh, sends in their INDs and basically consents that this would be an eight unit, uh, one building, even though it's operated with two. Okay. Agency. Okay. Any other questions? No, Mr. Chicas, do you have anything else to add in your one minute? No, ma'am. Just again, we undervalued across the board. Uh, we do believe that uh, uh, based on that, we should be confirmed at uh, two assessment values of 769,700. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Warren or Mr. Chitlick, do you have anything to add in your uh, last? I was just going to add their comp. The Courtly apartments are actually closed. It sits on Lee Highway and it appears to be going under a redevelopment as a, as a teardown. So it's not a currently open or operating. Uh, that is the one comp they had. It, it appears to be a land sale on Lee Highway. Um, so I wouldn't carry too much weight on that as comparing it to a, an apartment. Um, and if a cap rate sold on a land sale would be very different than that of a functioning garden apartment. So maybe that explains why their cap rates are so off. But um, we'll, we'll wait to see, get some more information on that. Blake, anything else you want to add? Uh, not much. Just again, uh, th there's really been no consideration from the county on the impact of COVID. So uh, the cap rate has, has been has been discussed has, has remained uh, the same as the prior year and um, nothing else in their assumptions um, for that consideration that impact of vacancy collection loss uh, concessions. And so what we would ask is is that you consider the the increased expenses experienced in, in 2020 or in 2020 of 42% in comparison to their 40%. Thank yeah. you. The last thing is that quarterly apartment sale was in 2019, pre-COVID. Um, okay, the post-COVID assessment sales ratios are more than half of them are higher than the assessment, including firm landing. Okay, thank you. Card. Okay, it's just among the board members. Um, I mean, I'll start on this. You know, I, I disagree with Mr. Warren's comment that we didn't give any consideration to the higher expenses. I mean the actual NOI is lower than what was actually achieved and lower than the previous years. So um, regardless of how the numbers shake out, I mean, if they would have adjusted the expenses, they would have gone back and adjusted um, the income to offset it. So the bottom line is NOI used to me is certainly in line with the performance of the property. So I don't have a problem with the assessment. What's other people think? Mr. Hoffman. I'm kind of like, what are we doing here? Looking at this case, right? If you don't want this building, put it on the market. It'll sell for a million dollars. OK, all right. Any other comments? Mr. Panaranda. Yeah, I agree with you. For, I mean, the first thing that 
top, uh, <clears throat> my, my attention was the expenses, like uh, Mr. Blake uh, mentioned, but uh, you know, the vacancy that has been allowed in the assessment, I think more than compensates that. And yeah, the NOI is what really is making the numbers to come up with. So even a $10,000 difference in value up or down, I don't think it would make that much difference. I'm okay with the assessment. Okay, then with that said, I'm gonna move on the first one ending in um, RPC 013 to confirm the county at 769700. Do I have a second? Um, Mary did. I'm sorry? Mary Hogan did? Yeah, I, I, did. Oh, I didn't see, I'm sorry. Okay. My, my okay. Mind a second by Ms. Hogan, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous counties confirmed at 769700. And on the second case, RPC ending in 014, I will also move to confirm that to 769700. Do I have a second? A second. Ms. Hogan again. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's unanimous as well. Um, that's confirmed at 769700. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chitlick. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other business from the county or any of the board members? Rosa, I just want to confirm there is not a hearing next Tuesday. No, there is not on the 28th. Um, let me verify that date. OK. Yeah, when's, when's the 20th? We'll meet back. Yes, the 28th. All right, so if then there's no further business, we will adjourn at 1011 and readjourn next Wednesday. July 28th at 9 a.m. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Chris, did you actually accidentally vote on that last case? Oh, that's all right. All right. Thanks, everyone.